Hello, my name's Lucy and today we're going to be cooking uh, veggie moussaka with cheats garlic bread. Uh, now, as a reminder, what I do is, um, to keep this fun for me, uh, so that I basically have minimal editing, I just run everything through in one take, no cuts, no speeding up, uh, which uh, keeps, it, keeps things simple for me, but also means you can see exactly how long everything takes. Uh, so you know that if there's some chopping and things, um, it's not like, oh, that's, that, that probably won't take very long, and then you come to do it yourself and you realise, no, actually, actually chopping three different vegetables actually quite time consuming. Um, and uh, also um, I consider uh, like getting out all of the various bits of pans and trays and things that you need, uh, as well as all of the bits of uh, ingredients. That's part of cooking. That means if you want to cook something for yourself, you'll get up and go to the kitchen and it won't be nicely laid out for you already. You're going to have to go and get it. So uh, I've got nothing ready except the uh, ingredient card, although because it's HelloFresh, um, all of the ingredients that don't need to be in the fridge are all stored in the bag that they come in. So they're all conveniently in one place, don't have to go between cupboards. Right, so um, I'm going to start fetching everything first. So there's the bag. And for this recipe I need an aubergine, that's in the fridge. I need an onion. I need a courgette, that's in the fridge. I need, oh it says a garlic clove. Um, I have many because uh, I always think the more garlic the better. Uh, some dried oregano. In a little packet, tomato puree, in a different packet, ground cinnamon, that would be interesting, in a packet, red split lentils, not actually that many, but some lentils. I specifically picked this recipe because of the lentils, because I was like, I want to eat, because they keep having recipes with lentils in, and I've, I've never been a big fan of lentils, but I also haven't eaten many of them, so I thought, well, I'll get a recipe with lentils in and see how I feel about them now. Uh, Worcestershire sauce, little packets, vegetable stock paste, so it's in a little tub. Finely chopped tomatoes. Got a carton of those. Uh, ciabatta. That's there. And then creme fraiche and grated Italian hot style hard cheese, which are also in the uh, in the fridge. And uh, the bag I will keep out, as I say, because it is very useful for as I'm peeling and chopping and discarding things. I just chuck all the rubbish in the bag and then throw the bag away at the end, rather than having to go back and forward to the bin. So. In the fridge, creme fraiche, great style Italian hard cheese, and to keep them fresh, I always keep my vegetables in a plastic bag. I'd like a resealable tub for this, but um, mostly the the reason they're in a bag is they're too big for any kind of tub or any kind of convenient tub. So uh, this bag contains vegetables for other recipes as well. That's why there's a cucumber. That's why there's a spring onion. So open this up. There's my aubergine, there's my courgette, and that's everything, so I'll tie this back up, put it back in the fridge, so I've got all of the, uh, all of the ingredients out now. And this dish, I think this dish, this kind of dish, it looks like it would be best eaten in, like a, in a serving plate, I think they're called the pasta dish, basically, they're not a soup bowl, because a soup bowl is deep and narrow at the top. These are wider and I bought these in a charity I bought this in a charity shop ages ago. It's it's previously an IKEA bowl, but I've had it for ages. I had two, I cracked one of them, wanted to find another one. Could not all the ones that they have in supermarkets are lower and the wrong size. I was looking for another one this size. It took me bloody ages, like three years of looking and I finally found something in Sainsbury's that was massively expensive because it's got flowers on it. Um, so yes, anyway, that's my bowl. And this is going to be eatable with a spoon rather than a fork. Although I will take um, a butter knife as well, just because there's going to be large slices of aubergine and I'll want to be able to get through those. And uh, also a mouth wiper. And I will want some juice to drink as I eat. And I'll get that out now. It's pineapple juice today. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through the instructions to see what it is that we're going to need. And like I already know, I'm going to need my chopping board, which I keep above the fridge. Oh. Oh. Which I 
heap above the fridge, but isn't there now because it's been washed up? So it's over in the, in the drying rack. There we go. So it's over in water, right? So here are the instructions. As I said, this is the Hello Fresh uh, vegetable moussaka with cheese garlic bread. I will drop a link in the description, but um, I, I think it's a fairly standard veggie moussaka, quite honestly. Uh, and yeah, this is one of the ones where it uh, doesn't give much for the, where, where for things for like herbs and things it gives things like dried oregano one sachet tomato puree half a sachet this is why i always look at this list first by the way because half a sachet because otherwise i would just on automatic have gone like oh a sachet well that's clearly all the tomato when it says add the tomato puree i'll add the tomato puree that they gave me but no you only need half the sachet so it needs the aubergine the onion the courgette two garlic cloves it, it will be more than two garlic cloves um Sachet of dried oregano, half a sachet of the tomato puree, sachet of the cinnamon, 50 grams of lentils, half a sachet of Worcestershire sauce, again, good for them for pointing that out, uh, 10 grams of vegetable stock paste, which is the one pot, the carn tomatoes, 75 ml of water, two tablespoons of olive oil, the ciabatta, 75 grams of creme fraiche, that's the, that's the size it comes in, 40 grams of the hard cheese, and that's it. So, because it says tablespoons of olive oil, I need a tablespoon measure, which is also in the sink drying. And olive oil I have plenty of over there, so that's fine. Uh, water, 75 mils. That's a low enough amount of water that the... Is it easier to measure it that way? What's water my cup? Yeah, this is one cup is 60 ml, so one cup plus one tablespoon, which is 15 ml, is 75 ml. So we're going to do it that way. Uh, so what I will do is just fill something with water so that I can scoop it out. There we go. Just must remember to do that properly and not um, not just put, I once I did that and accidentally forgot that I was supposed to scoop the water out and pour the entire amount of water in and made a very watery dish wasn't nice anyway so trim the aubergine slice into one centimeter thick rounds half peel and chop the onion into small pieces trim the courgette half lengthways chop into two centimeter wide strips chop into two centimeter chunks peel and grate the garlic or use a garlic press now so I'll get the garlic press out and I do have a garlic press and there's a lot of one-use kitchen, kitchen items for things like a cherry stoner, which, are just, which, which the only thing it does is stone cherries. And it's like, that's useful because stoning cherries is a massive pain. Um, and if you ever want to do some with cherries, you'll need a lot of them. But at the same time, how often do you make a cherry pie? You don't need a specialised item for it. Like, is it worth buying it and having it taking up space in your house? And obviously, if you've got mobility difficulties, things with your hands, and obviously, yes, that's that's useful but if it's not something you're going to use a lot of the time then like specifically i'm thinking not just like the cherry stone and there's also the thing you can get that's caught as a kiwi um i have not eaten a kiwi in years things like that just just a knife and fi you're not saving much time and you're saving so much money in space but a garlic press because garlic is like the base of a lot of dishes um, and because most of them call for crushed garlic, I do use the garlic press, press on a very regular basis. So that is like the one single use item that I would recommend to people. Whereas otherwise I would say, could you do this using a knife? Like, and only take maybe 30 seconds longer. And are you only going to use the other item once every two years? J just keep your knife. But yeah, garlic press, very, very handy. If you don't, um, you can chop it into small pieces, that's very fiddly. Um, you can grate it, obviously, as, as I've shown before. My grater is oh, it's in, it's also in the drying rack, but it's a box grater. It's not a box grater, it's a flat grater with a tub underneath it. Um, and that, again, that's the best kind for something like that because it catches it. Anyway, so uh, garlic press is the bit I need. Next. Pre oh, th this recipe also, by the way, is mostly done under the grill, which I would have thought baking, but they've, they've gone for grill. So what I'm going to also do is open up my grill, take out my grill pan out of the way, and my grill is already on the lowest layer. 
Um, I might need to take this, the, the tray out and put things on the bottom because all of my pots are quite, all of my uh, grill proof trays are quite high sided and they don't always fit even when the things on the bottom level, but we'll see. So preheat your grill to high. Um, I will not be preheating my grill. My grill heats up very quickly. Um, and despite it having 10 different settings, because it goes from one to five on the medium level and one to five on the high level, um, anything under three on the high level doesn't really cook very well or at all or warm things up. So I basically usually turn it up to five and then if things are getting too hot, turn it down to three for a little bit. And then those are the things that I cook it on. Um, and like I say, it does take like maybe five minutes to start really get going. Um, but all of the prep we're going to do is going to take a lot longer than that. So I'll basically flick it on just before we start, we start needing it rather than right now. So heat a drizzle of oil in a frying pan on a medium high heat. Add the onion, season with salt and pepper. Cook, stirring for six to seven minutes. Add the oregano, tomato puree, ground cinnamon and half the garlic. Uh, and cook for a minute more. So we're going to pass frying pan for this. Um, and I'm just now reading through to see how much stuff we're going to put in there to see whether it's worth um, getting out my big deep pan or whether I want my ordinary pan. Stir in the red lentils, Worcestershire sauce, vegetable stock paste, chopped tomatoes, water, or a pinch of sugar. It doesn't come with sugar. It says like a pinch of sugar if you have some. So I'm going to pull my jar of sugar out. Um, and that all sounds like it's going to be quite a reasonable amount of stuff. So I'm going to get out my big deep flat pan and my wooden pokey sticks. Right, so stir, bring to a boil, lower the heat to medium and simmer until the lentils are soft, 20 to 25 minutes. When the sauce has 10 minutes left, add the courgette and cook for the remaining 10 minutes. I wish it would just say cook for 25 minutes um, and after 15 minutes add the courgette. I find that an easier way of seeing things, but anyway. Um, meanwhile, lay the aubergine slices on a baking tray. Aubergine, aubergine is how you say that. Uh, in a single layer, drizzle over a glug of oil, season with salt and pepper, grill for eight to nine minutes on each side. Um, if they aren't soft, grill for another two to three minutes. In a small bowl, mix the remaining garlic with the olive oil, cut the ciabatta in half and smear with garlic oil on the cut side. Um, when the sauce is ready, which is the stuff in the pan, transfer the sauce to an oven proof dish, add the aubergine on top, Dollop over the creme fraiche and spread over the top. Sprinkle with the Italian hard cheese, uh, season with pepper. Grill for another five to six minutes. Once that's done, then put the garlic bread under the grill and toast for three minutes uh, and serve in bowls with the garlic bread on the side. So first thing I'm gonna do, also I'm gonna take my bowl and I'm gonna put that in the oven because we're not gonna use the oven. So that means I can use it to uh, heat the bowl. Um, and then other items that I need there. Um, I need a tray. There we go. Um, I need a spoon that I'm going to need to dish everything up and I'm going to need some foil to cover it um, because this, again, it's, um, it's a meal for two people. I'm just one person. So um, I will, as I go to eat, I will leave it to cool when I've finished eating and I come in to do the washing up. Uh, it will be cooler. I will cover it with foil, put it in the fridge uh, and reheat it tomorrow. Yum, yum, yum. So I'll get the foil ready for that. Um, I also need a tub. I'm not sorry, a tub. A uh, dish to cook it in. It's, this is for two people. I've got dishes of various sizes. So my question currently now is this dish or this dish. Uh, and I'm going to go with this dish, I think. This is usually for things that are for two people. I mean, it's going to be, because the, the sauce isn't actually going to be very bulky, because lentils are swell a bit, but not very much. So it's an aubergine the courgette will fit in there with some stuff around it. So uh, that's that. Into the cupboard. Oh, and I'll get my, get my apron. Right, 
And the other thing I'll need is, um, I will need a tub to put the uh, hard cheese in because I was, oh no I won't, because I'm sprinkling over cooking it, no I don't need to. Normally with cheese that sprinkles on top, obviously you sprinkle some now, heat it up, you, because you sprinkle it after cooking, so you'd cook, dish up, sprinkle over half, um, and then leave the other half of sprinkling over the dish the next day, but that's not that, so I don't need that. So I don't think I need, to, yeah everything's going in there, so I don't think I need anything to store, except, um, the oil and the garlic, which can go in a small tub. Come on. Yep, so the oil and garlic are going to end up going in a small tub. And the ciabatta half um, can go in a bag. Do I have any zip top bags that are not currently being used to store things like nuts? I'm going to do the shape that bag can use to kind of support the bread. Right, um, and I believe I've mentioned this before. While this means there will be a lot of waiting, because I could do the saw, like it, it says chop things in hand. Um, like there's a lot of stuff where I could be chopping, the, like I don't need to chop the courgette now. I could start cooking and then chop the courgette because the courgette just has to go in for the last um, 10 minutes. But I prefer to have everything ready. Uh, so I'll, I, I will start preparing and get everything chopped first, uh, which means there might be a bit of sitting around later. Um, and yes, uh, got everything that I need. So now I just need to work out timing. So the sauce takes eight minutes for the onion bit and then 25 minutes for the lentil bit. Whereas the aubergine takes about 18 minutes. So we put the aubergine, and obviously the aubergines, um, it's probably best to put them in at the same time as we're putting the lentils and then you've got a bit of a gap of time. So if the aubergines need slightly longer, that'll be fine. And also um, it doesn't matter if they go a bit cool because you're gonna bake them, put them on the top and bake them again. So uh, yes. Right, we'll start prepping the veggies then. So the prep thing, the things that need to be prepped are, well, there's not actually that much. There's the uh, garlic, courgette, aubergine, onion. I need to open the chopped tomatoes and I need to slice the ciabatta roll in half. Uh, and I'll slice the ciabatta roll in half first because uh, that, saves, that means I've got a clean knife on the bread. Um, and yeah, I think actually I can dip you down now because uh, I'm going to start be starting looking down and chopping. So there we go. Ooh. There we go. And I can always push back and forward, but uh, there we go. I'll move the everything out of the way. Right, so bread. I'm very bad at judging halves and slicing bread neatly, but uh, yeah, half of bread, half of bread, and obviously half of that will go tomorrow because I'll cook that uh, bit of uh, bit of uh, garlic bread fresh. But I will also just keep this in the bag for now so that it stays nice and fresh. It'll, it, bread goes hard very quickly, so if I um, leave this out until it needs to be grilled in like half an hour's over half an hour's time, that'll have gone hard. So I'll move that over there for now. Uh, I'll do the I'll do the garlic first because actually um, it will be good to get the uh, bread infused with oil at least to be early. So for the garlic, half of it, I mean it says it says two cloves, one clove for the garlic bread, one clove to go in the thing. I've got more like four here. There we go. Uh, so there'll be two for the bread and two for the. Uh, to the sauce. Yeah, my way of doing garlic is uh, just chop the hard end off and then basically just peel that way. You just there are gadgets I've seen you can just you can just peel it off. It's, it's not again unless you're for people who, who have disabilities and lack manual dexterity. Obviously, a gadget is very helpful. Um, if your hands are in working order, um, you don't you don't need to buy something. Um, you can I, I reassure you you can, you can manage. So that's 
two cloves. That's going to go in the oven bit where it's the oil. So I've got my pot and I squeeze and I squeeze. Scrape it off. And then with the garlic, obviously the, that doesn't push everything through because the garlic has a bit of a skin on it. So you sort of you use your bumpy bit to push it back up and you wiggle it about to get it another squeeze out of it, which gets another little bit, which again you cut off to get out. And then the last bit I always then take and just chuck in anyway. So there's that. That's the bit for the oil, uh, which I'll do in a second. And then the main bit, is the bit that's going to uh, be cooked with the onions, so this just needs taking off. Yeah, just yeah, just tweeze the skin, uh, just at the t at the tip. Just oh, I haven't taken the end of that. Take the end off, and then just. The, the, po the poke bit at the end is empty skin, so you can just, it's harder with a small bit, but you can just pull and it just pulls the, pulls the whole thing off. So that's the garlic, and I just, I tend to chop into bits, there's a bit in the middle of the garlic which is supposed to be the bit that makes it smell, your breath smell, and you take that out if you, I do not care at all. So this is now going to go in the press ready for uh, the main bit of the meal. So that's all ready. Uh, and I chop onions last. So, um, and I'll chop the courgette now because that can go on the that can go on the tray and get out of the way. So it's, I just clear the uh, clear the bit of the onion, clear the bit of the, the aubergine there, there, then cut off the bit with the green top. And the end's just a little bit knobbly, so I'll take just a tiny tiny slice off the end. And now uh, aubergine slices. Uh, slice is one centimetre thick. I'm very bad at judging distances and sizes, so I'm just going to go there, there. I'm not doing this at all ac accurately. Slice, slice, and just keep slicing. You can see the everything got a bit bashed, uh, bashed there, but it's uh, nothing, nothing, nothing made, nothing serious. I just keep slicing. And again, I'm not going to put oil on it until I'm ready to put it under the, uh, until just before I get ready to put it under the grill. Um, I'll do all of my slicing first. Aubergine absorbs oil like nobody's business, uh, but it is. Oh, I love, I love oh, roast aubergine and things. It's very, very nice. Um, grilled, it's going to be, I think. Second best, but it's still going to be nice, I think. So there we go. Right, that, and that's quite that. That makes quite a lot of slices. That one reason to slice aubergine. So I just start laying them out, which you can't see me doing, but I'll show you after I'm done. And obviously the circles are different sizes as well. This is going to be more than enough to cover the top of that uh, that small thing that I showed you, and it's more than enough for the bigger one as well. So you can pick. You can pick your sort of size of dish, whether you want a low dish or a uh, tall dish. Um, and I, oh, I've got fit, I fit most of them on. So uh, that's my sliced tray. Because these are so small, I probably will like poke them around. Uh, so that's ready to be oiled. And now the courgette. And the courgette, um, as it says, this doesn't need to be put in until later. Um, I'm still not a big fan of courgette. I, I never was, um, and now I'm fine with it in things. Um, but I find it doesn't actually bring much taste. It brings bulk, um, like just courgette on its own. I don't much like the taste of. But in, in a sauce like this, where it's going to be tomatoey and oniony with lentils and garlic and spices, it won't taste it very much. So I find it, it it does work very well as a bulk, as a thing that makes it uh, like more filling without necessarily um, bringing any overpowering flavour. So courgette has been halved, um, chop into strips. Boom, chop into strips. And then two centimetre chunks. So, yes. And 
and yeah, this is like obviously it's faster to do things in a if you can hold them in a block than having to slice every uh, every one individually. And you can see I don't particularly care that they're slightly different sizes because it's going to sort of boil away in the in the dish and then it's going to uh, be grilled. And yeah, I'm going to chuck chuck these into the serving tray just to stay out of the way while I cook because it won't matter that they've had that the trays had raw raw uh, courgette in it because then we'll cook everything put it back in and it won't make any difference whatsoever so that's all fine uh, now there's the onion um, and as I've said before with onions this onion needs to go into small pieces um, I've said before with onions they um, I, they don't tend to make me go but if they do if, if an onion is um, hurting your eyes then you stick it, uh, you hold it under, just under the tap, like once it's hard to just hold it under the tap uh, and get it very wet um, and that will, uh, should stop it, uh, stop it doing too much to your eyes. So I peel off the skin, I always take off the top layer of the thing as well usually, uh, the, top, the top layer of onion uh, because that, that bit can be quite, that bit can be quite dry and tough as well you don't need to that's me being uh, super picky I, I don't it's not necessary if you want to use more of the whole more of the whole onion it's a habit I got into because I, did, I, I now I'm now fine with it but I didn't used to like onions so it was a way of using less onion um, and then obviously the cooking the uh, chef's method of chopping which is slice nearly to the end leave, leave the bottom on slice nearly to the end slice nearly to the end and then slice down vertically while holding it steady, slice down vertically, nearly, nearly, nearly but not quite to the end, and then chop the front off in little bits, and you get little chunks of onion. And that gets you nice small pieces relatively easily without having to fiddle too much. And that is probably the most useful thing I ever learned at a, uh, at a cooking lesson. You do do that accidentally where you slice a bit out you can just poke it back into shape um, and you should still be able to get get the effect and chop 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 nice small pieces Now we've got uh, the oil, which needs to be two tablespoons. So one tablespoon, two tablespoons, and I also need a little spoon. I'm going to need to uh, stir this up and smear it on the, uh, on the bread in a second. Uh, garlic oil. And because I've added extra garlic, if I need to, if this doesn't seem to be coating enough the bread enough, because it's good to have give it a good coating of oil, you can. Um, well, I've, just, I've now thrown some out, so I'm going to tip some, tip some back in. You can just obviously add extra oil. Right, now I need to pour a little bit of oil in my frying pan ready. Oh, that's probably slightly too much. I always end up putting in too much oil, I'm very bad at pouring. So now, that's over there, that's over there. Yeah. Now I need to drizzle these with oil and season with salt and pepper. So we'll do a, do a swapsy roundy. Now you always, because it's such a big hole, I do this with my fingers over it so it only dribbles out a tiny amount. 
which is uh, convenient for controlling the flow of the oil because otherwise you just get a massive pour everywhere. And I'm just making sure I get a little bit of oil on the surface of every bit of aubergine. And as you can see, it's sinking into the aubergine very quickly. And also the aubergine is browning very quickly. The aubergine does that, it doesn't matter because we're going to uh, cook it very soon. Yeah, I think that's probably enough. I'm going to put my fingers. I can also wipe on there. And then salt and pepper. Salt, shake salt over everything. plenty of salt and I think it's my hands are all oily but I'm going to be touching other oily things soon so uh, just trying not to get it over the salt and pepper shakers so, a light dust of pepper and there we go so that's ready to go so now I, now what I do is I always double check my, my instructions so aubergine trimmed into one centimetre rounds onion chopped into small pieces courgette chopped into two centimetre chunks garlic peeled and grated uh, so now oil in a frying pan um, onion with salt and pepper for seven minutes um, once that's done add the oregano tomato puree cinnamon and garlic that isn't in the oil so onion salt and pepper and then it's oregano tomato puree ground cinnamon and the garlic so that's the next step basically I just keep the steps all together and that's one minute next stir in the then cook for one minute then the red lentils Worcestershire sauce stock paste and tomatoes and I'll just take the lid off the tomatoes and note the tomatoes when you pull them out this is a trick that I'll try and remember to show you um, because I've got to add water, um, there will be lots of tomato sauce left on the inside of this uh, inside of this carton. You can uh, pour the water into the carton, swirl it around, and pour the water out there to get more, even more tomato flavour. Add the water and a pinch of sugar. The sugar to get again to stop so that I don't need to keep this out. Um, I'm probably going to add one teaspoon of sugar. Uh, one one reasonably heaped teaspoon of sugar, maybe one, one a bit of the sugar. That's done. Um, do I need this for anything else? Uh, no, everything else is not measured in teaspoons. So these can go in the sink, which I'm doing now because obviously they've got the uh, They've got the oil on them. So those are ready to go into the grill. Move this back over. Right, and yeah. And yes, for pans on the stove, use uh, vegetable oil. For things that go in, that get baked or roasted in the oven, or in this case grilled, you use olive oil. Uh, and it's because of the uh, the smoking point, which is the point where it starts to burn, this is higher so you can get it hotter without burning everything. Anyway. So, ready to... So, yeah. Uh, I will chuck the grill up um, as I'm doing this, but not right now, but that will be uh, a good point to do it. Because um, the grill will get nice and hot and then ready because as I say I'll put the aubergine in when I put the lentils in but the lentils won't ready, aren't ready to go in for another seven minutes plus however long it takes me to put the ingredients in which always take longer than you think when you've got like four packets of things um, plus one minute plus putting the rest of the ingredients in so that's that, that's that, that's that they're ready for near the end, right I don't need this any longer. I'm going to take this away. I'm going to put this away because I spilled oil on the side and I don't want to need to wash that 
immediately uh, if I get it covered in oil. Right. So heat pan, and that's on a medium heat, which on my gas stove on a medium sized hob, a medium sized ring is actually towards the lower end of the lower end of the uh, thing. And then onion, salt and pepper. Since I'm not doing any more chopping, let's have an experiment and see uh, how easy it is for you to see the pan. Not very, because there's a bag in the way, but I can move the bag now. And yeah, right, I think that'll do. And that's just heating up. I'll just give that one more minute, because obviously I've got my structure on as well. And then I cook these for seven minutes, constantly poking. Oh, and that can go, um, that can go to be washed for a while. That carefully on the side. And that oil is reasonably warm. So uh, in go the onions. And stop the timer and add that salt and pepper it said it needed. Just a bit of salt, a bit grind of pepper. And stir. And there we go. And that's now cooking. I'm going to just mark where that is and show you there's the onions in the pan. Right, um, I think when this has got four minutes to go I'll turn up the, uh, the thing. Right, these are the first things to go in and it was all of the oregano and the cinnamon but only half of the tomato puree and I'm just going to open these, get these packages uh, opened up ready for pouring in because that's as I say, uh, trying to get everything in, in time, like when it says, like, do this for seven minutes, then put things in, then cook for one more minute, and you're like, it's, it's been two minutes of pouring in things from packets. Just keep stirring. This one's got a tougher packet with no uh, obvious entry. So I'm going to use the knife. Oh, this is it. It was half a bath because I shaved this and this will tear. There we go. Right. And I'll probably keep the other half of the sachet um, in the fridge just in case I need it for anything. But the chances are that not are nothing will come up and so um, I'll end up uh, throwing it away in a week's time when it's no longer any good. And that's, yeah, five minutes to go. And then I'm going to also going to get uh, is those. Then there's going to be the tomatoes, the water, the lentils, and the Worcestershire sauce. Um, Worcestershire sauce I'm not going to open because I will just knock it over and pour it everywhere. But I can open up the lentils. I say I can open up the lentils, my hands are still a bit sticky. Ah, there we go. Lentil bag open. Ready stock pouch open. There's now about four and a half minutes to go, so I'm going to knock the bread on to three. And yeah, just keep it, I'll just keep an eye on the onions. They're going a little bit translucent now when soft, which is nice, and this for this particular dish it's soft rather than crispy. So it may end up only being six minutes rather than seven. Um, and this is the sort of thing again where it's basically it's waiting around. This is the bit that gets fast forwarded through because uh, there's not really time to go because it's four minutes and because I need to keep an eye on them. There's not time to go and do anything else. Um, but at the same time, uh, you can't 
that uh, like you need to keep an eye. You can't you can't do anything else, but at the same time, it, it's, there's not much you need to actually be doing. You just need to poke them, um, sort of every 30 seconds. So yeah, this is the boring bit of cooking. Boring. Um, this is why I uh, frequently watch. Um, basically have a video or music on I can dance around the kitchen or I can uh, just be just be enjoying uh, enjoying Taskmaster or whatever but uh, it's also you to chat so um, I don't currently have any humorous anecdotes uh, don't, don't be media to recommend at the moment I'm going to watch in the next couple of days um, I'm watching Nora Adol's House um, live stream from the Egg Theatre. I have I like Ibsen. I have seen Adol's House. Adol's House was um, performed by my student theatre company uh, when I in bus when I was back at university, and I wasn't in it, but I did uh, I did watch it while I was uh, and I did the front of house so I got to see it for free. I always just do front of house because I got to see things for free. Um, so um, I don't know what that, this version is going to be like and obviously by the time I've watched it and then you film this and you see it <laughs> then that particular performance will be off and with theatre, with live theatre, that's one of the things I like about it but the way a different cast and a different play and a different director like this is going to be different to any other performance of Ibsen that I've seen and any other future Ibsen I've seen but um, as a play I recommend it already and I'll let you know uh, what I thought of the actual performance once I've seen it It's starting to brown a bit, I don't really want it to brown a bit, um, but I don't really want to turn things down anymore. So um, I'm going to give it another 40 seconds, which will take us down to the uh, one minute. Because it said six to seven minutes, and I said seven minutes to do, but I think I'll leave it to six minutes. Um, so basically I'll just keep stirring it for the next 30 seconds, and then add everything, and then give it the one minute. Slightly brown, and when you add things, obviously that. Um, also, when you things down, you can just pull it off the heat for a little bit, rather than if you've got the if you've got the level the knob where you like it. But also, um, adding things cools it down because you put, you're putting cool things in the pan. In this particular case, it won't cool it very much because it's just a small amount of essentially dust. Right, spices and tomato puree in. Right, half the tomato puree. You know, the first one that I remember specifically, that it's only half of what's in this packet. go, cinnamon, sprinkle all over, sprinkle, oh, drop the packet, sprinkle, 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 oregano, sprinkle, 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 and the garlic. And now see, I put this, started put this in another time, I said one minute, it now says 20 seconds. Um, and I haven't stirred it through the pan yet, so it's uh, it's one minute from now is when I need to start adding more things. And with this, you want to stir everything through thoroughly so that the onions and all the spices cook off, so, so that the onions get all the flavours and everything. Like I said, that's beeping, but it needs another 40 seconds. Um, and once I've had the other 40 seconds, it's the lentils, the Worcestershire sauce, the stock paste, and the tomatoes. That needs to be ready to go. That goes there, that goes there. That's for the fridge. That goes in the bin. Yeah, just poke this about. about right, so then I will pour in the lentils. Uh, and just make sure to cover them in the paste, in, in the flavour paste that uh, we've made in this pan. Add in the tomato. That's the big cool thing, that thing called, that's what cools down the pan. And as you saw, I put my sugar on top of the tomatoes. I just do that so that I don't have to, so that when I add, I have to add all of these things. I don't have one extra thing I need to measure out and add. 
Um, like I don't have to either measure a teaspoon at the last minute or I'm gonna stop talking for a second while I do that. Water, 75 mils, so that's that. Sixty mils. Pour into this tub, which, as you can see, still had stuff on it. So I put that in there. Oh, that's what I needed the spoon for. I needed something. Well, I can't be asked to go fetch it now, so I'm going to use this. Uh, this little tub. That's about that's about fifteen mils. It doesn't matter if it's a bit of extra water because it says if it gets dry, add more water. So do that. Pull that in, that's the other cold thing. Stir everything round. Bring to the boil and lower the heat to medium and simmer for 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to say 25 minutes. And it's already boiling because the pan was hot and because it took a while to get all of the stuff in. So I'm just going to, and when I say, when it says medium, I basically turn this hob down as low as it goes. And that's 25 minutes to go. And then when there's 15 minutes to go, when there's 10 minutes to go, sorry, that's when I add the courgette. So now this and this needs to go and wash it up. And the aubergine is also going to go under um, it's 25 minutes. I've turned my grill up to max now, and so in, in eight minutes' time, so it's about 17 minutes, I'll check on that. These need to go in the washing up. That it also needs to wash up. That's for later, that's for later, that's for later. Those have been later. This is going to go in the fridge in the little tub. And I also need to slightly clear space in my fridge for where this is going to go because obviously the uh, tray, because it's a two portion tray is a lot bigger than uh, than uh, the single person tubs that I put places. Right, and also I was talking about something earlier and I've now forgotten what it was. It was about getting, oh that was it right. I put the sugar, oh I forgot what's the sauce because I was leaving it on something. That's all right, uh, it hasn't been too long. It won't lose any flavour from having me pour in water sauce now. The only thing is it normally recommends water sauce before the water because you pour it in and it goes and burns off which it won't. And also I've just remembered now that should have only been half a packet not a full packet. So I've also put in too much and that's not, I think that's going to be a bit strong. So if it's too strong later that's why I've put in too much water sauce. But no, I put the sugar on the tomatoes because as you can see how long it takes to put everything in when it's cooking and it's, that's not accounted for in the cooking time. Um, rather than having to go and find a spoon and measure the sugar and put it in or having to have a separate little bowl where I've already measured the sugar out so I can put that in more easily and it still be a third thing. So I put it on top of the tomatoes so it goes in at the same time and that's perfectly fine. Right, so that, that's going to cook for another, as I say, that's going to cook for another, um, let's have a look. That's going to cook for another 22 minutes. Um, the aubergine's in and that's going to cook for another little while. So we're going to move over to doing the washing up. And I say this, um, the first part of washing up I think is going to be putting, well firstly I'll wash up all the stuff that needs to go in the recycling. So I'm going to put that by the microwave, which is where I put the recycling. Basically I have one of those large recycling bins, like the ones that are yay high. Um, so that, that obviously lives outside, uh, so rather than constantly go to the bin when I'm cooking, I put everything by the, by the microwave, by the kitchen door, and then um, 
when I need to, when I'm done or when I've got a spare minute, I just hop out and take everything out with me. Right, so these are just going to put away. And I might end up back over here, I'll just give things a nice stir again. Just keep it all nice and loose. on the garlic bread but this there's not actually that much washing up so this won't take long I also haven't thought what I'm going to use to turn over the uh, the aubergine I may I will probably just use a fork and spoon that I've got for eating with later to uh, minimize the amount of implements that I need to get out and wash up so wash, 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 wash. Oh, a knife. And as I've said, with my knives, because I try to take care of them and keep them sharp, unlike everything else which goes in the dryer, I can just dry, drip dry. The knives get uh, dried with a tea towel and put in the put in the knife rack. along with a chunk of my other cooking implements, or none of the ones you've seen today, were bought. Um, I went to the Ashburton Cookery School for a cooking holiday um, many, several years ago now, um, and did a week, the week's cooking holiday. And it is expensive, um, I, I, I did think it was well worth my time. Um, it, was, it was just, it was good fun. Um, you got to cook a lot of tasty things, and you learn techniques, which is the thing, it's not so much the dishes themselves, it's like things like the chopping technique, and stuff like that and then they do have a shop for selling the things that you use so like the cooking knives that I've got and then this chopping board the cooking knives actually were bought from there but ordered um, online afterwards as a like, Christmas present but uh, the board I, I bought at the time um, so you can look you can after you've had a chance to use things and play with them then if you think they're really useful and you really like them then you can buy them which I think is a good way to good way to be so, uh, then they do, do, and they do do a proper cookery school as well for like actually training people to be chefs and caterers and things. Like the the one week course I did is a course for fun, um, and they do a very beginners level one which I didn't do, and then they do two intermediate ones, both of which I've done, um, and then they do an advanced one which I haven't done. Uh, and like, if you're someone who's not at all confident in cooking and want to get better and do have the cash to spare. Um, I, I, I'd say it's probably it's a good way to gain confidence in the beginner's course because like I say I haven't done it but looking at the level of the intermediate course if you're already quite into cooking you sort of vaguely know um, vaguely know how to keep, keep up and chop things then you'll learn things like how to fillet a fish how to uh, cut apart a chicken um, and chopping techniques and things but the um, but it's like it, it's a bit to keep up with if you don't cook regularly already um, but if you do then it's good fun and you learn some new techniques but looking at that then the beginner's course would be good for someone who isn't a confident cook um, I, again sight unseen I think I think based on how good they were for the intermediate I'm thinking the beginner's level would be um, a really useful way to learn Do this last bit of washing up. You can always check for uh, bits of garlic stuck in the garlic press. And it's good to get one with comfortable handles and that isn't stiff and doesn't fall apart uh, for a garlic press. Right, so that's that. Oh, my hands are all wet. Right, so we're back over to here. And we've got 16 minutes to go, which is about time to be turning the aubergine and have a look at them. See if they're brown. Ooh, 
they're mostly brown. Um, the back row is not because um, my tray is slightly bigger than my grill, so I'm just going to put one more minute I'm going to do to let the back row get done. And then I'm going to turn them over and do it again. Stir, stir, stir. That's got to go in when there's 10 minutes to go. I just keep reminding myself. And I also do need to do the, uh, the garlic bread, but I won't do that right this second because I've got the aubergines to look at. I think I'm going to need to boil and so season the back of the aubergines before I put them back under. So I just now want to check, check what the uh, other side's doing. There we go, that's probably about right. As you can see, this is quite hot. So I need to be careful, but the tray does cool down very quickly. Um, and the worktop can handle it for the shot. Normally I do, I, normally I put the hot trays on this uh, thing, but because I need to flip them, I'll just do it work quickly. Like I say, just flippity, flippity, flippity. Oh yes, that works absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Come on, you. And like I say, I'll drizzle over some oil. And they shrunk a bit as well, so those extra bits, um, A, might be needed, and B, now just fit on perfectly fine without, uh, without any bother. And like I say, I'll pour over a bit more oil, pour over a bit more salt, shove it back under. And I'll keep it this way round because those were the least cooked ones, so they'll they'll get cooked more by this side. Like I say, I'll keep an eye on everything. Nearly done, nearly done, nearly done. Nearly done. And I'll push everything more towards this side of the tray because that's that way uh, there'll be less that doesn't get cooked properly. Not being covered. And I'm going to keep this tray, I must remember, after I uh, take them out to make the thing. That will be then where I put what I put the garlic bread on to, um, to cook. So I need to make sure not to shove it in the sink, otherwise I'll need to dirty another tray to clean to do the garlic bread. And quite frankly, it says do the thing, do, do the moussaka and then do the garlic bread. I'm like, quite frankly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them under, I'm going to put them, put the moussaka on the tray and then put the, put the garlic bread on the tray and so they all come out at the same time. So salt, 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 Not much because the other side will get properly salted. Pepper, 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 pepper. And this is actually cool enough to touch without a oven glove now. Pop that back under. That's the 13 minutes, so when it comes to uh, five minutes to go, we'll have another look. Give this a poke. This is drying out a bit, but I don't think too much, and I don't want it. To, I don't like it too watery. So uh, there we go. So give it another stir. And now we've got our bit of garlic bread that we're going to oil. That can go in the cup. That other piece can go in the cupboard, ready for uh, ready for tomorrow. I'm going to just put that while I'm here. Take this out again. So, got me bread. Got me oil. Stir, stir, stir. And then just drizzle over, rub with the back of the spoon. Make sure to get lots of nice little bits of garlic. And because it's got holes in it, poke stuff into the poke stuff into the holes. That's a nice little treat for yourself. And cover all of the bread. So make sure it's uh, nice and damp with oil. Like I say, you can um, always add more oil. Um, and like and I do this, like I say, I do this at the very start, sort of thing, so that there's been time for the garlic to infuse into the oil a bit. Um, before you rub it on, so it's not just oily bread with chunks of garlic, it's actually garlicky oil. Um, and like if you wanted to do it well in advance, that would make it a lot nicer, but that's like more organisation and hassle than I can be asked with. So uh, I've covered that, and there's plenty of oil that's going to be left 
for for essentially for tomorrow and the uh, and the slice for tomorrow. And if there wasn't, I could just add some more oil now, um, and that would obviously infuse nicely. And I'm going to leave that tub out ready. This spoon can be washed up. Also, my aubergine, I think, is cooking too much. Some of it's burning thin a bit, so I'm going to turn my grill down. And I'm going to just chuck just a tiny splash of water in there. And yeah, that's much improved. And we're now down to 10 minutes, so 10 minutes, I have remembered, it's time for the project. Stir the courgette through, and this is why I'm glad to have the deep, the deep, the, like the deep, the high-sided frying pan, because it specifically says the recipe use a frying pan, not a saucepan, because you fry the onions off to start with. But that means this isn't too bad. Um, there, there are worse ones, but it's just so much easier to stir this round and round with the high sides without making a mess. So that spoon and knife are to later. That's all ready now. Go back in the washing thing. And the plate is in the oven. The plate will need heating up. The plate is in the oven, the plate will need heating up, but because that's going to go under the grill, the moussaka is going to go under the grill for six minutes, and prepping the moussaka by putting the aubergine on top and the creme fraiche and the, uh, and the cheese, that's all going to take a bit. So um, I don't need to do that now, I'll probably do that when there's two minutes to go. I'm also, as I say, keeping an eye on the aubergine. Thin bits are looking a bit burnt. I'm going to drag them to the very back. And uh, scoot the other thick bits forward. Well, that's on about four now. And that's on the Good. Because I added some cold courgette, I'm just going to turn it up slightly. Now, basically, I need to wait for five minutes uh, for, the, for the aubergine to be done. I'm getting this food ready because I need to do the creme fraiche. Okay, five minutes for the aubergine to be done, uh, eight minutes for that to be done, and then grilling. So now this is again standing about part, and now that I've done the washing up, I did remember my. Puffin book of classic verse. So I'm going to go through and uh, pick one out. And bearing in mind, I may have to stop to grab the aubergine. One that I like. William Shakespeare uh, from The Tempest. Oh. Full fathom five, thy father lies. Of his bones a coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Sea nymphs hourly ring his knell. Ding dong. Hark, I hear them now. Ding dong bell. So uh, that's poem number one. And now this is making a lot more of a, more of a bubbling noise, so I'm going to turn the heat right back down again and give it a good old poke. Go and have a look at the aubergine. It's browning, but I think it could do with another. I'm going to turn it to five, and again, I'm going to give it one more minute, and that I think should do it. Um, 
Unfortunately, this book is already a bit, uh, a bit battered, so it doesn't matter if I get a little bit of food on it. It's a shortish poem, short one. Ah, there's one. Oh, oh when I was in love with you by A.E. Houseman. Oh, when I was in love with you. Then I was clean and brave, and miles around the wonder grew, how well I did behave. And now the fancy passes by, and nothing will remain. And miles around they will say that I am quite myself again. I like that one. Uh, probably time for one more short one. Well, we're definitely doing that one, but later. There are so many books in there are so many poems in this book that I really like. Oh, the self same song with Thomas Hardy. Not a particular favourite, but it just caught my eye. A bird sings the self same song with never a fault in its flow that we listened to here those long, long years ago. A pleasing marvel is how a strain of such a rapturous rote should have gone on thus till now, unchanged in a note. But it's not the self same bird. No, perished dust is he, as also are those who heard that song with me. Ah, there we go. So that was nice, uh, and now we're at the point where I need to poke this again. Keep poking. It's, it's again getting a little dry, but I don't want to add any more water since I don't usually add extra water, and this is already done. Uh, and like I said, it's probably going to be very strong with just a short sauce anyway. Um, what's the aubergine like? Oh, I think the aubergine is done. Yes. So that's the aubergine, which I'm now going to leave on the stove top rather than on the side. So that's the aubergine done. That's ready to go. That's ready to go. So I can, again, for the next four minutes, uh, read poetry until that's ready to go. Right, I know the one I saw. I just need to find it. section it's in, it's in the school one, to the people. It must be figures of fun. No, it's in school. Timothy Winters by Charles Corsley. Uh, so here we go. Timothy Winters comes to school with eyes as wide as a football pool, ears like bombs and teeth like splinters, a blitz of a boy is Timothy Winters. His belly is white, his neck is dark, and his hair is an exclamation mark. His clothes are enough to scare a crow, and through his britches the blue winds blow. When teacher talks, he won't hear a word, and he shoots down dead the arithmetic bird. He licks the patterns off his plate, and he's not even heard of the welfare state. Timothy Winters has bloody feet, and he lives in a house on Suez Street. He sleeps in a sack on the kitchen floor, and they say there aren't boys like him anymore. Old man Winters likes his beer, and his missus ran off with a bombardier. Grandma sits in the grate with gin, and Timothy's dosed with an aspirin. The welfare worker lies awake, but the law's as tricky as a ten-foot snake. So Timothy Winters drinks his cup, and slowly goes on growing up. At morning prayers the headmaster helves for children less fortunate than ourselves and the loudest response in the room is when Timothy Winters roars, Amen. So come one angel, come on ten. Timothy Winters says, Amen. Amen, 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 Amen. Timothy Winters Lord, Amen. So yeah, that's, that's a particular favourite. I really like that poem. Uh, we're two minutes to go, so I'm just going to chuck this on at, uh, slight, at basically 80 degrees, slightly above defrost. So yeah, that particular poem I've been a big fan of for a long while. I'd, Charles Causley. I've only read a couple of his other poems, um, and they're all slightly more humorous and less serious than that one. But uh, yes, that, that's a very good poem that I feel very strongly about. Right, this is another poke. This is the last poke. Scrapers. And we've got one minute thirty seconds to go. 
that's on the lowest heat, that's ready. They're now temperature you can pick up to put on top. And then we'll need to add the creme fraiche and the cheese. I'm just going to read the instructions again, just to make sure I'm doing everything right. I, I constantly read the instructions. Um, it's slightly um, compulsive, uh, but it uh, makes me feel better. So, prepare aubergine, prepare onion, prepare courgette, prepare garlic, cook onion, add items, add further items, cook for 25 minutes. Add courgette, grill the aubergine, add garlic and olive oil, add to garlic ciabatta, and then the next step is add sauce to the oven proof dish, layer over the aubergine slices, dollop over the creme fraiche and spread evenly, sprinkle over the hard cheese, season with pepper, um, grill for six minutes, um, and grill garlic bread for three minutes. So I'm just going to chuck that back on again now. It was already hot but I'm going to check the grill back on again. And we've got 10 seconds to go. So quick the time off. Um, I won't take the extractor pan off just yet because um, I imagine cooking it under the grill is going to cook, going to, uh, going to also produce some smoke and steam and also this is still steaming so it's useful to get the uh, damp out of the kitchen to keep the extractor pan on. So hope Poke this round, scrape out, scrape out the pan. And as I've said previously, because this is a nice pan and a new pan, and because it took me bloody ages to find, um, I'm not going to shove it under the tap. I'm going to uh, going to let it cool down on its own, and then put hot water in it once it is nice and cool. I've got most of the stuff out of there, and again, I'm not scraping the pan, scraping it too hard because again, that is a thing you can scratch it. Not with these, um, but yeah, if, if possible, don't use a metal spoon to get anything out of it. That goes in there. That goes there to cool. And I flatten this out and fill fill the corners. And make sure the courgette is roughly even distributed. That's nice and flat. That's done. These can go. These can go. That's it. Lay over and cover with the aubergine. There's lots of different sizes of aubergine because obviously an aubergine is not a uniform width. It goes like that. So you've got some big, thick slices from one end and some thin slices from. Uh, near the top, and they have shrunk uh, as they've been grilled. So that does a nice job of covering, covering the whole thing. Just tuck, tuck the pieces in everywhere. So you've got to you can use up all of them as well. That's nice. Crisper, right? So that's done. Remember, I don't want to um, put that straight in the wash because I want to cook this on this. So then I've got this space here that I can put the bread on and do both at the same time. Uh, so I've got my creme fraiche here, which needs to be open. So I should have not washed up the knife. So poke, poke, poke. You could use some scissors, I suppose, um, as well. In fact, scissors might be better. But my cooking scissors, I don't want to get dirty and have to wash. So this, I should have given it a much more of a shake uh, because it, there's now a runny part and a non-runny part of um, and it would be easier if it was all thick. But just a thin layer all over the top. I'm going to spread out with this spoon. And again, this is fiddly and this is what I mean by um, it says, look, you've done all of the other stuff for the aubergine and for the uh, lentils. And you've got another six minutes to go, but it's not six minutes after the 25 minutes because there's a whole construction phase uh, that needs to be done. Yeah, just I'm using my fingers as well. And, and again, if, you, if you're cooking for other people, they might object. 
to having your hands all over the food even if you've recently washed them. Uh, so you might want to be more careful and that would make this more awkward but because I'm cooking, cooking for myself um, and I'm quite happy with my hands. Um, Yeah, this pouch is less convenient than the squirty pouches. I much prefer the squirty pouches. Uh, this is um, more awkward to get out. Um, and I feel like I'm leaving stuff inside. I'm also making a mess all over my hands and all over the table. And it is, there we go is covering everything. Mm. Right, that's a horrible mess. So I'm going to shove that in the bin bag and I'm going to wash my hands. It's kind of fresh. I'm eating with, so I've just licked the creme fresh off it. Which again I can do because I'm just going to do the one eating with it. So there's that. So now they have just got to sprinkle over the cheese. Pepper. And then there's going to be five minutes under the grill with the garlic bread in part of that time. And normally this opens quite easily, but because I just wash my hands and because this isn't working properly, I'm going to use a knife on this as well. There we go. It's also not, I'm going to also slightly wipe the uh, creme fraiche off this tray because otherwise it's going to burn on when I put it into the grill. Sprinkle, sprinkle the cheese lightly over the top. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. and uh, evenly scattered the whole bag. Scrape the cheese out of the bag. There we go. That can go in thin. Now my rubbish bag, I've used up all the rubbish, just a quick swirl of black pepper, just lightly, just, just so you can see it. Um, and yeah, this is going to go under the grill. And because that's so high up, yeah, and because the grill's already hot, five minutes might be too much. But with three minutes to go, that's going to go in. Um, I'm just going to quickly wash this spoon. Spoon's a knife, Lucy. It's a knife. They're very different. So quickly wash up my knife. I could, if I really rushed, uh, wash up the uh, the wooden spatulas, but I'm not going to uh, because it is a rush, and I want to keep an eye on what's going on under the grill. So I'm probably going to want to turn it round, and I also do need to add the um, the garlic bread at some point. Bring this over ready for the bowl. My kitchen foil already, I've got that ready to dish up. That's ready there. Oh, my socks is coming down, so I'm just going to pull my socks up. And that's cool, so I can move that over there. So we're going to move to the grill. 
and as you can see that's already starting to go so yes that's going to be lovely so yeah 30 seconds that goes in then wait three minutes i'm not doing more poetry because like i said i need to keep an eye I'm very pleased. And also, when it's like one minute ago, I'm going to pull out my ready heated bowl so that it's all just ready to serve up. And I am going to move this out of the way again, actually, because uh, I'm going to want to put my uh, hot thing here to serve up because it's very convenient. Because, like I said, that's cool enough to touch now. Uh, but it's convenient to put the hot thing on there rather than on the side. Three minutes to go. Hit with garlic bread. That's getting nice and cheesy as well. I may need to turn that round in one minute. Let's, uh... And this is the thing, because the light, because it's heated by a top element that's red, it makes it look more orange than it is, so it's very hard to see what colour anything is without pulling it out, top tip. So you do need to actually open and look. Looking forward to this food. Um, I've been cooking for quite, like I said, this is quite, quite an effort. And even if there's, there's bits of it that I could have done, like at the same time, um, like the uh, oiling, and even then oiling garlic bread, I did do it at the same time. It was just preparing the garlic oil, which you want to do in advance to make it more garlicky. But um, yeah, there was seven minutes of onion, plus one more minute, plus 25 minutes, plus six minutes under the grill, plus however much time it takes to put things in the pan and during that cooking, plus that bit of assembling time. So this is a long dish. I mean, it says this dish is 45 minutes, uh, and it's been longer than that. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna turn, turn this around now. Oh yes, that's going to be nice and brown. And the garlic bread, so I'm just going to turn everything around just to catch it all nice over. And there we go. One more minute and it will be done. I'm just actually going to turn the heat down just slightly because it wasn't mostly been overdone. Um, and now this pan's this cooling, so I'm just going to fill it with water even though I'm not going to wash it. So it's nice and ready. So, with a little splash of water, because in the warm water. Cool. The way that you have this kind of, I, basically I bought it to be the same size as one that I already have, and I've measured it physically against it, and they're the same size. This one looks much smaller, because, because this one's black inside, and the other white inside. And it's a massive optical illusion as to how they look such different sizes, even though I've placed them side by side so they're the same height, face to face, the bases are the same size, uh, and room to room, so they're tops are the same size. It's all the same size, but it looks so much smaller. It's really weird. I mean, they've got both got lids, and then you can use their lids interchangeably. And we're left 10 seconds to go, so off with that. Out with the serving, serving bowl. And out with this. I've got to be careful because this is heavy and it's heavy on one side. It's not a big thing, that's annoying. You know, it's heavy on one side now. Um, so I need to spread and carry with two hands or not burning my side. And I have slightly overdone garlic bread. Uh, but uh, this is what it looks like now. That looks yummy. That looks slightly overdone but not terrible. So, uh, Serving up time. So uh, this goes right over here, close as it can be. This can move off the side here. And then just poke this across. And then again, have a have a have a thick cloth ready to uh, to hold it steady. And because this has got the aubergine on top, it's uh, going to be slightly awkward to cut. And also because it's a nice crisp top when you're doing it, try to keep the crisp, you're going to have to do it in bits. I always try and keep the crisp top, not putting the wet stuff on top of the crisp top because then you'll lose the crispiness. And then 
there. I can turn this off now as well, I reckon. That's nice. And double check. All of that's off. It's still making a humming noise. That's because it actually does have a cooling function. Um, where once it's been on and it's got very hot, it keeps the fan running even after you've turned the heat off to cool it down quicker. Uh, which is very, very useful. And that goes in there. In there and like I say I'm going to leave that go in there so I'm going to put this spoon in the wash and I'm going to leave that on there to cool down um, but I am going to actually take it off the uh, tray because it will actually cool down much easier um, on the hob because there's air underneath it rather than being on a hot tray so all of this goes into the sink to wash And that's absolutely fine. But that's my food. So I've got my garlic bread, I've got my moussaka, and I've got my tomorrow's moussaka. So, and um, basically, as an FYI, for how I would do that tomorrow, I would probably cover it once it's cool, cover it in foil, put it in the fridge. And then when I want to cook it again, obviously, the garlic bread, I need to do the whole rubbing the oil over, putting it under the grill for three minutes. But for that, specifically, I wouldn't microwave it. I'd leave it wrapped in foil and I'd put it in the oven for like 20 minutes to warm through. And after 20 minutes, I'd basically I'd stick a spoon in the middle of it and see if it was hot all the way through. And if it wasn't, I'd give it another five minutes. Um, and that would be about 180 degrees. So that's how I'd reheat that to keep the top crispy. Um, anyway, so that looks all delicious. Um, I'm going to eat it and then I'll give you, obviously, my usual 30 seconds. How I felt about it, what I thought it tasted like. Um, so, bon appetit! So, I've just finished that vegetable moussaka and yum! So, the garlic bread was lovely, it was crisp, it was garlicky, it was very tasty. It's a really good way of quickly doing garlic bread. Just get a ciabatta, rub over some uh, oil that's had crushed garlic in it with bits of garlic, uh, grill for, a, like, a, like you saw, three minutes, and that gets you some really nice tasting garlic bread. The moussaka itself, the topping, the uh, aubergine with the creme fraiche and the cheese, that was just mm, yum. I really like, I deliberately kept a bit of it just for the very end because that was nice. Uh, that was so nice. The filling, um, it was still good. Um, I was right, I did put in too much Worcestershire sauce, just uh, which didn't spoil it, but a hair less would have been nicer. It was still rich in filling. Um, and after saying all that about how courgette is uh, tasteless in tasteless in big sauce meals um, and just bulks it out, there was sufficiently little other stuff in the sauce because it was just tomatoes and onion with herbs uh, that actually you could... Um, the courgette wasn't completely masked. So that... W and the thing is, like, I don't mind courgette. It's just not my favourite thing. Um, but that's a thing to be aware of. Um... And as, as I say, overall, the overall taste of the uh, the sauce was nice. The lentils, you couldn't really tell. Again, it's um, I suppose it's for bulk. You couldn't really tell the lentils were in there. I don't necessarily had a specific flavour, but they worked just fine. Um, and overall, it was plenty filling. It was, I've, I feel like I've had a good filling meal. Um, and I've got another, because you saw I only took half of it. So I've got another good feeling, filling meal tomorrow as well. So overall, I'd say... I'd say three stars because it was good, but it wasn't all my favourite thing. It's not It's not going to be a favourite meal. I probably won't cook it again, but I did enjoy eating it. I thought that was pretty good. So, yeah, uh, three stars. Um, very enjoyable. Try it yourself. Uh, and bye-bye. Uh,